Good morning, knuckle draggers. Uh, uh, so, I'm gonna apologize right now if uh, for road noise and anything else. I'm a little bit peeved. So, my job requires me to go to some companies that require identifications and badging and background checks and whatnot, which is fine, whatever, no big deal. I ain't got anything to worry about. My background's pretty clean other than, you know, a few little things. However, one company in particular wants to do a full background check, FBI level background check on me. I have a current active identification from the United States military where the FBI has vetted me and granted me a security clearance. I have a concealed weapons license where the local sheriff has vetted me and cleared me to carry a handgun concealed. I also have a TWIC card where the TSA has vetted me and cleared me as a as not a threat. And yet this company still requires me to bring court documentation to show my true identity. Why doesn't this company get with the fucking program? I don't know. I don't care. They do a lot of work for the federal government. So they should be able to pull up my security certificates off of my military ID and realize, hey, you know what? This guy is not a threat. This guy is the least threat that we have to worry about. But, you know, whatever. I don't care. They're paying an hourly rate of $175 an hour. So a two hour inspection, oh, and plus mileage. So a two hour inspection that could have been taken care of. Let's see, I started at 5.15 in the morning, drove there, literally sat in the security office for 30 minutes while they tried to figure things out. And blah, 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 and whoop, whoop, whoop. Just to drive home to pick up a piece of paper and return just to stand in their office again to go whoop, 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 blah, blah, blah to do a hour, hour and a half long inspection. Their tab will come out to about five, five hours once I'm done. Plus my mileage and everything else. Anything else that I need to take care of. I don't care. I get paid by the hour by my company. Now, I just I just find it funny that, you know, they granted me clearance less than a month ago to come onto their property. Actually, not even a month ago. They granted me clearance nine days ago to come onto the property and service a piece of equipment. Now, I have to go get supporting documentation of a name change. But yet, I have three forms of ID, actually four forms of ID. One issued by the state, one issued by TSA, one issued by the federal government, and one issued by um, the sheriff, all showing the same name. Same birthday, same name, same information. Whatever, who cares? They're paying way more money. Not my issue. But, here's an update on everything else. 
So, the 7.3 IDI, uh, I dropped the heads off, let's see, what is it, Wednesday? Dropped the heads off Monday to have those machined, uh, waiting for a call back. They're gonna, they have them hot tanking and they're getting them all cleaned up and made look at per day. Uh, so they should give me a call back here pretty soon in the next couple days. No big rush. Uh, money's gotten a little tight right now, but no big rush on getting it done. Uh, the cam will go out next week. Again, I'm not in a hurry to get my, my truck put back together. I, I have a company service truck. I have my wife's car. Uh, so not not too not too concerned about getting my truck up and running but it will be finished and you guys will get to see the uh, beautiful finished product product I am however getting rid of the hokey hillbilly dual exhaust that was put on it um, probably just gonna do a three inch three inch uh, from the collector back with a stainless steel uh, like MagnaFlow or MagnaFlow knockoff, I don't care. Uh, I want it loud but not obnoxious. Uh, so if you guys have any comments or any recommendations for exhaust on a non-turboed uh, diesel, put them in below. Put them down there at the bottom. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's that right now. Uh, the Jeep is still sitting. It is what it is. Uh, not too too worried about getting that one done. I want to say give a huge thanks to my buddy Steve. He hooked me up on some uh, steel braided lines for the front on my Jeep. So those will eventually be getting put on. Uh, you all will see it, see it, some pictures and videos of, of the uh, old red when she's uh, put back together and running and, and whatnot. Looking forward to that. But in other news, in other life, I've uh, been thinking about relocating my family from Oregon. Right now we're in Clackamas, Oregon, and been thinking about going to uh, Montana or North Dakota or South Dakota. Uh, the brain dead liberalness of Oregon and most of Washington has repeatedly proven itself not worthy. Our crime here in Oregon has gone up. Uh, just last weekend, there was seven shootings, seven shootings investigations in the Portland metro area. When you have more shootings or more shooting investigations than Los Angeles, where I grew up, not exactly the place I want to raise my family. Our homeless population increases. Um, they, they just released a study saying that there's over 4,000 over 4,000 homeless people. And that was from 2017. So we're talking two years ago. The number has increased. Uh, more than 50 more than 50% of them have substance addictions or uh, you know which means that they're addicted to heroin methamphetamine whatever um, never really seen a heroin junkie that you know has been violent or anything like that you know if people want to shoot up and slam dope, you know, slam heroin and whatnot, whatever. You know, if, if they're decent people, you know, that's the life they want to live. It's the tweakers. 
I call it the Oregon State Bird. You can literally stand out at night and go, tweak, 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 and you'll fucking find them. So, but I've been thinking about Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, possibly going to work for the oil fields, oil companies out there. Uh, I'm an equipment mechanic. Uh, I have four years of being a equipment mechanic under my belt, plus, oh God, I don't know how many years total of just being a mechanic. You know, starting off in high school and going in the Marine Corps and being a helicopter mechanic in the Marine Corps, and I was a maintenance chief for military police in the Marine Corps, working on our trucks. Uh, so that's one thing. Idiot in front of me just cut me off and jammed his brakes. Um, typical Northwest driver. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have anything to say about North Dakota or South Dakota or Montana, yes, I know it gets cold in the winter. I know you guys see like below freezing temperatures. We don't we don't see that up here in Oregon unless you're in I think it's Burns or Banks, Oregon. Then you guys see some pretty cold temperatures. But I know North Dakota, South Dakota, and Montana gets pretty damn cold at night, or cold in period in the winter, uh, which doesn't really bother me too bad. Um, or if you have friends that, you know, live in North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, have them drop a line, have them watch this video, have them drop a line, have them make recommendations. I'm gonna get a, uh, get one of them Instagram, account set up for uh, this channel here soon uh, maybe even create a uh, Facebook for this channel uh, try to stay very low key I don't like to I don't like being on the grid very much uh, don't like ruffling jimmies and creating problems when it comes to the interwebs and securities and whatnot. Uh, my wife's birthday's coming up here soon. She'll be celebrating the big 29. I love her. She, or, oh shit, she'll be 30. Big 3-0. The dirty 30. <laughs> uh, she, my wife is absolutely, utterly amazing. She puts up with my wild antics um, <laughs> she doesn't bitch too much about my tool bills because she realizes that my tools make my make our money uh, so you know I'll even do some tool reviews and some tips for people getting into this industry becoming, you know, becoming a mechanic or, you know, becoming an equipment mechanic or automotive mechanic. Um, it was, yeah, it's a very expensive industry. Uh, whenever I hear teachers every year around school, oh, we use all our money for for school supplies and education supplies and blah blah blah. Well, how about how about the mechanics that use their own money to pay for tools to work on car on other people's cars? How about well and the schooling? Uh, sometimes we have to pay for our own own schooling. Uh, go to certain classes in California I had to pay for 
my own class to go become smog cer uh, smog certified, and I had to pay for my smog smogging license. Um, granted, some of it was reimbursed by the empl my employer, but. I had to pay for the class. I had to pay for my license initially. I had to wait for the, you know all that stuff, and I had to maintain a liability on that. Uh, where if I got caught doing something not legal, I had to pay the price on it. Uh, so there was that. Uh, let you know. Let's talk about the attorneys that you know, have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars going to college to get their uh, degree. What about the, you know, and the bar, bar licensing, and they have to renew things, and they still have to go to, go to classes and do updates on certain laws and, you know, whatnot. What about the doctors and surgeons and nurses generally they pay for their education you know I, doctors I know rack up about a hundred two hundred grand in debt and pay for their licensing pay for their schooling pay for their education and every so often they have to go back for you know, enhancement classes, you know, like, oh, you know, you're a heart surgeon, here, we're doing this, and, you know, granted, some companies put on these events where, you know, you can go get, they can go get trained and whatnot, you know, to use that company's product. Uh, you know, what about, let's see, I'm trying to think of, you know, trying to think of other careers that, you know, we, that people use their own money to pay for, you know, their work supplies. Um, let's say janitors, but I don't think I've ever seen a janitor pay for their own supplies. You know, what about all these small business guys, you know, that pay for their own trucks, pay for their own trailers, pay for their own equipment, pay for their own fuel? Sometimes they don't make much more money than what they put out. You know, especially starting off, you're going into it in debt. And if you don't make it or break it, then you've lost all that money. You know. So yeah. Don't be a teacher. If you're going to whine about having to use your own money... Don't be a teacher. Don't be a mechanic. Go find something else to do, you millennial. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what the rough, rough thing is right now. But you know, I do want a change of scenery. I grew up in Southern California. Didn't like it there. Moved up here to Oregon a few years ago. I like, I liked Oregon. When I first came here, um, I like the weather. You know, it's a temperate, temperate climate or a temperate forest. Uh, you know, winter time we get a lot of rain. It gets cold. We get we've been getting a lot of snow, or not a lot, but a fair amount of snow at our elevation, um, which is cool. I love the snow. I love the cold. Um, but just the political environment and, you know, all these other little nuances and whatnot have not made me happy here. Um, our governor basically told us voters to go pound sand when we voted no on driver's licenses for illegal aliens. Uh... California did the same thing. We didn't see a drop in crime for that. Uh, you know, I, oh, well, they'll, 
they'll be a safer driver with the driver's license. You know, don't sit here and say that I'm that I'm racist because you know because I'm against illegal aliens. No, being an illegal alien is not a race. An illegal alien is a legal status. If you're not here via a visa or doc, you know, naturalization papers or green card or, you know, whatever, you, your, your method of getting here was coming here undetected by agents, you are an illegal alien. Now, I understand that, you know, there is hardworking folk that come here to better their families, better their lives, and I'm all for that. I'm all for the betterment of yourself and your family. But, you know, you should take pride in this country that has, give, that has given you that opportunity. Um, to better your family, better your life. Oh, tight fit on this road. It's funny driving a 20,000 pound service truck down some some of these small roads here in Oregon. Um, this thing doesn't exactly stop or handle like a uh, Ferrari. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those things of, you know, if you want to come here and you want to become part of the scenery, go for it. You know, just do, do things legit. Pay your dues. Don't cause problems. I don't care if you're here. Whatever. Don't become a leech on my on society. Can't believe they cut that big tree down. That's a, that was a beautiful tree. I'll see if I can get a shot of it while I'm driving out. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to get a shot of it because the way I'm pulling in, I'm gonna have to pull out different. Must be nice to have a banker uh, office job hours. I'll be back, guys.